so we have seen why we ha we should normalize the input uh, what we do basically in normalization that uh, uh, we have uh, these number of features uh, in a data set and these are the number of data points we have uh, unique uh, data point for it, uh, corresponding to each data and uh, a feature we have uh, the column for one feature and what we do that uh, we take one column and create uh, take uh, calculate mean and calculate a standard deviation and we subtract uh, a standard deviation of uh, we calculate uh, subtract um, mean uh, and we divide it by standard deviation that's how you know uh, standardize this data so that our uh, uh, our data distribution would look something like this uh, where we have zero mean and uh, and normal is a uh, mm, standard deviation so this is how we do with for the input layer but when we have these input layer then the uh, network is just still training and we have this hidden representations h1 h2 and these uh, we have some weights and network is still training so what we do uh, in this case so when we uh, we can assume it like uh, we have we had for our input uh, layer uh, you have this h1 uh, and h this this h1 mm, and yeah sorry yeah, this h1 and then h2 obviously we will have also an h3 and so on so and number of like uh, input layers we, this is like this is like a d network uh, d uh, where thousand network is d so each data point like this is h11 so this is how like we have all the we can represent these hidden values as a in a matrix format and then we can uh, the things that we used to do for the uh, for our input layer that like uh, why we used to normalize it the same logics can apply here too like if you remember it then why we used to do the uh, normalization and uh, normalization was like to uh, feature like if we have a uh, input feature that have like a high value high weight then the vector uh, was more resultant vector was more skewed toward the uh, high weight uh, feature the, and also uh, another thing was that our if I ha this this is a loss curve so our uh, mm, uh, to reach the minima it would take a mm, very zigzag path and would take much more time to converge that's why we used to standardize that our data that's the same logic can apply in, uh, at the hidden layer also that now uh, all this uh, mm, values uh, we will calculate a mean of this value and a standard deviation and uh, subtract individual elements from uh, subtract mean from uh, in each individual element and divide this by standard deviation so our uh, the hidden values that we have will be in a certain range and the logic is same for basically both so that's uh, that's what like we exactly do in the batch normalization like we have uh, if we have this layer and this is the train so we will calculate for uh, to normalize each uh, layer for this input and that's the main reason for to do batch normalization so like just as you standardize the input uh, standardize the activations at all layers also so we that's why like we have this input layer and this um, we standardize all the uh, hidden layers also mm. 
and the formula would be the same this is the uh, hij norm formula that would be like a uh, to uh, subtract mean from all the individual element and divide it by standard deviation the formula would be the same um for mean then and for the standard deviation mm. but we remember that the in a batch format we do not like uh, send full data for uh, iteration we send the data in batches so at this time the like uh, m would not be the total uh, data size it would be like 32 or whatever your batch size is so this is the difference uh, only and you got the reason why we do the batch normalization in the um, for the hidden layer just because our uh, data um, uh, data would be in certain uh, range and it would not be biased toward a certain feature that's why so that's the procedure for batch knowledge i will end this video here uh, we'll see you in the next one